Praise the Lord. Amen. What a wonderful time in the presence of God this morning. Amen. I feel refreshed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that there's times of refreshing that come from the presence of the Lord alone. And there's sometimes we can be weary, but when we get in the presence of God, that weariness goes and strength comes. And it's a joy to be here in the presence of the Lord with you today and feel that infusion of His grace. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Cooper, for the invitation or the invite to your platform today. I count it an honor to be here to share the word. And uh, I trust that God's word will enrich us today. Amen. Who's looking for something that will in be infused into your heart, that will strengthen your faith? I want to talk about winning from within today. You see, every battle that we ever face is either won or lost inside of us before it's won or lost outside of us. Amen. So I want to talk about how to Receive the grace in our hearts for the race that God has called us to run. I've just come back with a team from uh, India. I've been going in there for 37 years. Uh, we've been training pastors and planting churches throughout that time. And uh, we are thrilled to sense what God is doing in that nation. Uh, it's one of your near neighbors. Uh, but what a, great, what a great opportunity is for the gospel. In fact, India represents the largest open mission field in the history of the world. That's a huge thing. And uh, it's open to the gospel. Uh, if we're wise, we can continue to go. If we're not wise, we probably will be shut out of there. But uh, it is open for those that are within to proclaim the gospel and uh, the church that, we, uh, that is led by one of my converts many years ago is, is heading up an apostolic initiative in that nation. And they, that church alone, has planted 113 churches out of one church and oversees uh, hundreds more churches in an apostolic fashion, encouraging them to also begin to plant. So right through that region, which is Andhra Pradesh region, where we spend a lot of our time, there is just a major uh, expansion of the kingdom of God. So, hallelujah. Jesus is on the throne and uh, everything is going according to his plan. That's what the Bible says. He's working all things after the counsel of his sovereign plan. So it's all good as far as God is concerned. He's on the throne and God help us as the church to rise in this hour and uh, fulfill the destiny and the purpose that he has got for us. So my desire today is to share some spiritual gift. Paul said that when he wrote to the Romans, he said, I want to come to you that I might impart to you some spiritual gift to the end. He, Paul always had an objective. He had a goal to the end that you might be made strong. And I trust today that as we share the word that God will make us strong in faith, that we might run the race that God has set before us. Father, we thank you for your presence today. We thank you, Lord, that this has been a God-honoring service where, Lord, our focus has been upon you and we look to you because you're the author and you are the finisher. You are everything in between. You are everything to us, Lord. You're the source of our life. You're the circumference of our life. You surround us with your presence and your power and we thank you filling us with your grace, Lord, to run the race that you've set before us. So, Father, today I pray that you'll infuse into our hearts fresh grace, fresh strength, that we might fulfill the divine plan and mandate that you've put upon us. And we thank you for it today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You win from within. And so that's going to be the, the, the theme I want to develop today. I want you to come in your Bibles to first, uh, 2 Thessalonians Second Thessalonians, we're going to read a couple of verses here. Second uh, Thessalonians um, uh, chapter 1 and um, verses 2, 3, and 4. We'll just look at it just to introduce the subject. Grace to you. Grace to you. That is the divine favor or the smile of God is, the, is what's referred to by grace. And there's all sorts of... Uh, 
technical and perhaps detail that we could bring in there. But I just want to talk about the smile, the favor of God. Who, who knows the favor of God is a powerful influence? We need the favor of God in everything that we do. The smile of God. We want God's smile, his favor to come down upon our lives. And Paul's saying to this young church, a young church that was birthed very uh, di- in great difficulty. In fact, Paul was uh, uh, taken out of the town two weeks after to three weeks after the church was planted. Uh, Paul was gone. He had been uh, uh, he had been put out of the town, and uh, so he wrote back a couple of letters to encourage them. But this letter, he says, "Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ." He says, "We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it's appropriate, as it's fitting, because your faith." grows exceedingly we we want to be uh, we want that testimony thank god that we had faith yesterday thank god we had faith 10 years ago but but friends today is our faith today growing exceedingly what a marvelous testimony for a, a church that was birthed in difficulty but the testimony of this church is that its faith grows exceedingly And the love of every one of you all abounds towards each other. I I want to be the pastor of this church. Their faith is growing and they are loving one another. That that would make a pastor's job just very simple. This, This church is not just a crowd that gathers on Sunday. This is a pulsating organism filled with the life of God. Amen. This is this is this is a, a energized and and and, uh, and and empowered by the spirit of God and the grace of God. He says so that we ourselves boast of you among the churches of God for your patience and faith. You see sometimes when we talk about faith growing and love amongst the brethren we think while well, they must be having an easy time. But if you look at this next verse, it says that your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that you endure. In other words, we're going to look today at how to become resourced by the grace. What, can, what choices can I make? What actions can I engage in that's going to bring this kind of quality of life? Because we all face challenges. We all face trials. We all face Things that we did not expect to come our way, but they come our way. Who's found that in life? There's stuff that happens. Tragic things that can happen that you're not expecting. Uh, As a family, we would have been on the news here and on the news in other places. My nephew, who was a minister in Adelaide, was struck by lightning. You might have heard about the young preacher that was struck by lightning in, in Australia and some of you are nodding your heads. That was my nephew serving God, 39 years of age, my sister's oldest son, and uh, serving God, and lightning came and struck, and he died there at that time. Uh, I am sure they were not ready for that in the sense they hadn't planned for that to happen. But you see, stuff happens in life that we want to have the drawdown of divine grace. There's trials that come that we didn't expect. There's sickness that comes. There's circumstances that shift. There are things that can come and they can attempt, really, to have an influence on our faith. And we need to be ready for that and filled with the grace of God. I think if you study all the great heroes of faith, uh, it wasn't because they were heroes of faith because everything went well with them. They weren't heroes of faith because everything just came out according to some perfect plan. They're heroes of faith because they faced real trials. They faced real challenges. And in those trials and those challenges, they found that God's grace was sufficient for them. And so today, uh, we can't predict the future. In fact, we're very happy to have God in charge of our future. Who's happy with that? And a God that says, no matter what our future, future is, that if we will allow his grace to work in us, we can come through triumphant in every trial. Hallelujah. It was just three years ago when I had a heart, open heart surgery. I was discussing this with your pastor this morning. He tells me he got healed of heart condition and I got surgically healed of heart condition. And I, I said to him, maybe God's got favorites. But he, he said, we're all favored of God. So I'm, a, I'm happy with that. But it's, it's grace that carries, carries us through. Amen. It's the strength and the grace of God. No matter what happens, and it's, there's been some trials. So I've just been back to India to, just to 
to declare my testimony. I, well, I could say in the, in the words of the, of the, of the film star, uh, Schwarzenegger, uh, I'm back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, we, we, you know, some people said to me, Chris, now you, need to, you really need to slow down because I'm quite a few years older than your pastor. I know I don't look it, but I am. And, uh, and uh, <laughs> hallelujah. Uh, but uh, uh, I have no intention of slowing down. Uh, I, I think there's work to be done and there's grace to carry us in the race. Hallelujah. So this, this church that's uh, before us, the Thessalonian church, they're just, they just powering on and there's trials and testings and stuff is happening. But they are saying, well, you know, as we draw down on the grace of God, we're ready for this. Amen? Amen. Amen. Turn to the person next to you and say, I'm ready for the race. I'm ready for the race. Hallelujah. I I, I have no intentions of slowing down. The world is uh, in all sorts of uh, turbulent uh, situation, but we, the church of Jesus, see this as it's our harvest time. Amen? the, 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 The fields are white to harvest. I, I love the theme you, you've developed in the worship time, the focus on Jesus, um, you know, the, the, the focus of faith, the focus forward. Hallelujah. Uh, and so I feel rather at home here this morning, and I hope I'm not making myself feel too at home. All right. <laughs> Hallelujah. Abraham, the man of faith, was the friend of God. You know, I think there's a connection between the fellowship that we enjoy with the Lord and the quality of our faith that we can walk in. Amen? And God is calling us not just to great exploits, but great intimacy. Amen? He's wanting to develop in us a love for His presence, to walk in that sense of His shadow of the Almighty, to live in that sense of His presence, the friendship With the Lord. So I wanted to develop. I want to turn to the book of Psalms now, Psalm 61. And we'll spend a little time here this morning. Um, And uh, it's going to be. Who loves the Psalms? Well, there's there's Psalms for every season. Uh, Sometimes we don't feel like we can pray as we would like, but you can open up the Psalms and somehow you can engage your spirit in the heart of. Uh, the Psalms, because that's uh, the heart of a man that was just so open to God. In verse uh, 1 of Psalm 61, it says, Hear my cry, O Lord, attend to my prayers. From the end of the earth I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed. Who's ever been there where, you know, things like are overwhelming? Who's been at the... We have a saying, I don't know whether it's the same here... But when you get to the end of your rope or you get to the end of yourself, anybody been at the end of yourself like, God, I, this is the, who knows that we can either panic or we can fall in a heap and, 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 and despair. Or David said, when I get to the end of the rope, I got a plan. I got to cry to God. You know, we, I want to talk about three choices, four choices that we can make to build our inner life so that we can win from within. And it doesn't cost any money, by the way. This is free. So, uh, you know, uh, this, this is so accessible. This is the choices that we make to be the kind of people of faith that can change our particular sphere of the world. So we're talking about those inner, those inner life changes. So David is saying, I'll just keep reading this psalm and then we'll come back over and pick out the four things that he said. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle or in your presence forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. You will prolong the king's life as years, as many, his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. I will sing praise to your name forever that I may daily 
perform my vows. There's some powerful stuff that we could pull out of that this morning, but I really just want to take four thoughts. But as we come to that, um, Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 says, Diligently guard your heart, for out of it flow the issues of life. I pastored for over 40 years, so I understand a lot about people, and pastoring is, is about people, spending time with people. And it's very easy for us to, to blame our circumstances, what did or didn't happen, or what was favorable or unfavorable, what was fair or unfair. There's a lot of things we can do to create certain excuse, excuses for perhaps our behavior or our, uh, our responses. But here it says in, in Proverbs, it's diligently guard your heart, for out of it spring the issues of life. One translation says, for out of it the boundaries of your life are set. It's not your circumstances that set the boundaries. It's not the favorable times or unfavorable times that set the boundaries of your life. It's what comes out of your heart, your response in times of challenge is what sets the parameters of your life. And that's an encouraging thing today that we are really, if we attend to our heart, if we diligently attend to our heart, we can expand the boundaries of our lives. Amen? God wants to expand the boundaries. I don't know where you came from. I don't know where you started. But I want to tell you this, that God wants to expand the boundaries. Amen? God wants to expand the boundaries of this church. Thank God for what is here. But this church expand, has got boundaries expanded left and right. God's extending the boundaries. Extending the, Why? Because of the heart. I love the missional heart of this church. That there's, in just sharing with your pastor in the office, there's, he's got a heart for India. and been going in and out of there for years and, and other places. You know, the, what's, what's setting the boundaries? It's, what sets the boundaries for your life, for my life, for this church, is, is not the financial constraints. It's not, the, it's not all those visible things. It's what's in our hearts that sets the boundaries for our life. Amen? And so I want to encourage you to, 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 to have the right stuff coming out of our heart. Let, guard your heart diligently. Make sure that there's faith inside your spirit. And when the circumstances come, instead of being sort of maybe reactionary or resentful, these are opportunities to build our faith life. Amen? I, uh, I'm one of ten children. And uh, that's a big family in our country, and I think it's a big family in this country, uh, but raised up with, with 10 kids, and, 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 but I, and we didn't have church except it was church in the home. We, lived, we grew up in remote Australia, about 1,000 kilometers from Perth in Western Australia, so we grew, grew up in the remote area. But thank God for a mother and father of faith, and they put faith into us. And thank God for that. But I started off with certain limited circumstances, certain li limited exposure. But, but that's not what limits my life. What limits my life is what's coming out of my heart. It's what's going on inside of me is going to limit me. It's not where you start that matters. It's how we run the race and how we finish. Amen. So we, we, we can't blame our circumstances. We just simply have an opportunity for faith. So I want to look at these four things that we can choose to do. Verse 2 of, of, of Psalm 61 says, from the end of the earth, or when I'm at my wit's end, when things cannot be uh, seemingly get any worse, I've made a choice. This is my choice. I am going to cry out to God. I am going to be a person of prayer. You see, friends, we can, we can, we can lament the circumstances. We can lament the situations. Or when we're at the end of it, we can say, this is an incredible moment for prayer. And in my own life growing up, I watched my mother. And I, 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 we had this example of a godly praying mother. Who knows when you're raising 10 kids in a very remote and difficult pioneering situation where there was everything from snakes in the house to all sorts of other stuff happening. It's a great opportunity for faith. She was not a country girl. She was a city lady. My father went to the city, married her, and took her into the country. I think she, I think she was rather startled by what she discovered when she said, I do. And then she had to choose to say, I will. 
and, uh, and uh, it, uh, it was tough. But, but she chose in the midst of that. She chose a few things, but one of the things she chose that she would pray. I didn't go to church. I didn't have an ex- a, a church family as such. I had a godly family. But I had the privilege of hearing prayer every morning and every night. I heard, I went to sleep to prayer, I woke to prayer, and that was not for a 10 year period or 20. I'm talking for 30 years of isolation. We had an environment of, and an example of prayer. And I want to encourage you today this is our greatest, nearest. Access point to God's grace is the ability to cry. Even when things are tough, we can say, I'm going to make a choice. I'm going to be a person of prayer. What we need in this hour of great challenge is people that know how to get in and hang on and pray through. And I watched my mom and dad. They prayed. They prayed for us one by one by one and saw us come to an encounter with God, an encounter with with faith, and our spouses were people of faith and came to know Christ, and and our children, 40 grandchildren that came to know Christ, and then the great children. On my mother's funeral, which I had the privilege of taking that day, on the day of a funeral, her 67th great-grandchild was born. Hallelujah. Uh, There's a few generations uh, of Petersons. Uh, We are prolific breeding stock. (laughs) Hallelujah. Uh, But it's godly seed. It's godly seed. And I think that's that's what prayer does. It, It begins to bring God down through the generations. It says this is the heritage. This psalm talks about the the heritage. And there's a marvelous heritage you have. And prayer, I think, is one of the great conveyors of that heritage. That we're saying, no, we don't just want to be saved. We want to see our children and our children's children. We want the generations to be generations of faith. What are we going to do? In our times of calamity, in our times of distress, we want to model faith. We want to model prayer. We are going to cry out to God. I've been watching Facebook. I've been in India since this great tragedy happened in my family. And I've been watching my sister. She's one of my younger sisters. And I've been watching her on Facebook. Encouraging all those people that are shocked by the circumstance. The mother of the boy is ministering to the people. And people say, Chris, uh, Sharon, we, we don't understand. There's such an incredible deposit of faith. You're putting it in our hearts, but it's you going through the trial. What a marvelous opportunity. Our tragedies are opportunities for us to cry out to God and to tap into the divine grace and to have our hearts filled and strengthened. Hallelujah. When I get to the end of myself, I'm going to cry out to God. I am not going to despair. I am not going to let doubt and fear begin to dominate my life. I am going to cry to God. The second thing the psalmist said, and it's a powerful statement in verse 4. He said, not only will I cry, but he said, I'm going to abide. I will abide in your tabernacle or in your presence forever. You see, we can make a choice. There's only one thing that can separate. Circumstances can't separate us from God. You know, in Romans it talks about height and depth and all this stuff. There's only one thing that can separate us from God. That's sin. So David is saying in the psalm, he said, I I am going to abide in the presence of God. In his presence is fullness of joy. In his presence. So David's saying, I will abide in your tabernacle. I will abide in your tent. I will abide in that canopy of your presence. I I am not going to let anything in my life that's going to separate me from God. No attitude. no, No words of doubt or fear. I refuse to let anything obstruct the light of his countenance. Shining in my life. I refuse to let those things. I am not going to. You know stuff happens. People say because you know life is not fair. I say there's a couple of things that weren't fair. Who thinks Calvary was unfair? Was Calvary unfair? But somehow Calvary was part of God's great plan of redemption. 
There's stuff that happens to us that is unfair. But somehow God can take those things and turn those things that are negative to become building blocks of our life. Everything that the enemy designs for evil, God can transition those circumstances to become building blocks or stepping stones into greater levels. And so it's, it's important not to let wrong attitudes or wrong reactions or wrong words begin to frustrate the purposes of God. Don't let sin into our life because sin casts the shadow and the enemy can begin to work on our lives. I will abide in the presence. I will not let any thought or action or attitude begin to obstruct my clear vision that Jesus is on the throne. Amen. I'm going to live in his presence. I'm, I'm choosing to develop that walk, that sort of walk with God and uh, just know his abiding presence. Hallelujah. The third thing there is also in verse 4. He said, I will trust in the shelter of your wings. I am going to be a faith person. I am not letting doubt come. I refuse to let fear. I, let, I refuse to let uh, that, that, that the uncertainties of life begin to, to stop me on my journey of faith. He says, I'm, I'm going to trust in God. I, I will trust. You know, we used to sing a song, I will trust and never be afraid. Though I walk in sunshine or in shade, for Jesus walks along the road with me and I can enjoy his presence constantly. We, we want to be a trusting person. And as I say, there's people that model faith to us as we go along. You say, I want to be like that kind of person that trusts in the Lord. The Bible says, they that trust in the Lord will be like Mount Zion that cannot be shaken. There is a world that is already teetering. Political systems are teetering. Economic systems are teetering. And I think maybe there's going to be some cataclysmic things that are going to happen around our life in the next few years. This is going to be the test of the church. When everything is shaking, we are sheltered in the rock that is higher than I. Amen. That we are going to trust in the Lord and be like Mount Zion that cannot be shaken. I'm going to choose And I think this is important for us to get. I'm going to choose to cry out to God. I am going to choose to live my life in a a pure way. I'm, 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 I'm not going to allow sin in any form to begin to dominate or infiltrate my life. I want to walk in the presence of God. I am going to trust God. I am not going to be filled with doubt and fear. I think the economic systems around the world are probably going to shake Singapore is very safe in a lot of ways. It's a very strong economy. Australia is apparently doing okay, depending on who you read about. Uh, we've been, uh, we just used to just blow up another mountain and send it to China, and uh, that sort of got us out of, got us out of trouble. But uh, China's not so, so forthcoming in buying our mountains anymore, so we've, we've got some challenges. Um, we've been digging holes and blowing mountains up for years to, to, to float our economy. Uh, but you know, uh, our trust is not in our economy. Our trust is in the Lord. Amen. Our trust is not in the Sing dollar or the US dollar or the Aussie dollar. Uh, our, our, our trust is in the Lord. And uh, we shall not be ashamed. Those that trust in the Lord will not be brought to shame. Hallelujah. So that's, that we, we, I want to build this faith life that we can run the race that God's called us to. God's called us to run a race. And uh, there are going to be challenges. We lay aside, as the song said this morning, we lay aside the, the sin and the weights that are easily beset. We're going to run this race that God's got for us. So we're going to trust in the Lord and be unshakable. And this, the fourth thing I want to pick up on this morning is in verse 8. He says, so I will sing praise or I will celebrate to your name forever. I'm going to be a celebrating believer. This is another thing that I had modeled to me. My mother was a, was a great singer. She sang a lot. She had a great voice. And uh, right through to her, her, her passing at 93 years of age, or just on 93 years of age, she sang. I took a month off work, and I sat by my mother's bedside, and I took my baritone ukulele, and we worshipped for a month. She knew she was 
about to pass over, but she, 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 I went down and we just sang and different ones of the family came along the way. I sat there for a month and we just worshipped together. I did that because I was, I, I was brought up in a house of song. As I say, we didn't have church, we just had song. We had celebration. And there is something very, very powerful in celebrating. Amen. You know, we could talk about the warfare element of worship. We can talk about the presence aspect of worship. And uh, that's what, in fact, they brought the cameras in uh, to, the, to, to the bedside of my mother. And we sang a, a, a sort of a trio quartet come families uh, song. And so my mother had a reputation. She sang at everybody's funeral. So we thought, well, she sings at everybody else's funeral. Let's take, let's take the camera crew in. And we took, a, we took the song down. And so she sang at her own funeral. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because her, she was noted as a singer, as a celebrator of the faithfulness and the goodness and the mercies of God. And friends, today I believe that I, we choose to be a celebrating people. There is tremendous power in praise. And there's something that breaks the shackles and the limitations and the things that would hold us back and hold us down if, as, we, as we celebrate God, as we choose to sing unto the Lord, sing praises to His name and, and rejoice before Him. Hallelujah. There's something that happens. When Paul and Silas were at midnight and they were bleeding and they were in stocks, and what did they do? They sang... And they prayed and they sang praises to God and the prison began to shake. We want to shake our prisons. We want to open those limiting circumstances. There is something about the power of praise. I came into the meeting today and the, and the worship and the praise. I, I just felt like I, I, I felt like I just melded with the heart of this church. This is, a, this is not only just a singing church. This is a celebrating. This is a worshiping church. This is a presence church. There is power in this place. There's miracles in the house. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe it today. There's something about creating an atmosphere around our lives and praise and singing unto God somehow sets an environment where the miraculous can manifest. Amen. And I believe today as we come, we are saying we, we're, we're, we, we can do things that, that set the course of our life. Circumstances come. That, we can't avoid that. That stuff will be there. But we have got some things that we want to tap into. We want to tap into some simple things that we can, I call them portable truth. You know, it's good to have great deep truth and have it in the volumes on the bookshelf. But you see, we, we, we don't get noticed that stuff is going to happen sometimes. There are circumstances that come. We need to have already a pattern of life that says, when things get tough, I get to pray in. I am going to cry out to God. I'm going to lay a hold of His promise. This is, this is how I'm going to choose to live my, my life. When I came out of the surgery, uh, they medicated me wrongly and my head began to go all sorts of places and I, I had never been in those dark places before. They were medically induced as well as the surgical situation. And all I had left was the promises. Amen. I put music on 24 hours a day and I me I'd memorized over the many years of being a preacher and I began to take a hold of the promises of God. And although everything was sort of going crazy, I was saying, God, you promised. Your word is true. And sometimes as we go through those dark places, it's good to have a place where we can cry out and say, God, you called us. Your promises are true. You didn't give me a crazy mind. You gave me the power of love and a sound mind. And if I quoted that scripture once, I quoted it 10,000 times over those next months. God, this is the mind you gave me. Hallelujah. I am going to lay a hold of this. I'm crying out to you for a breakthrough in this area of my life. Hallelujah. We go through the valley of the shadow of death, but we will fear no evil for thou art with me. And so, friends, we want, to, we want to build faith for the journey. Each one of us don't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but we know who's going to be with us. And we need to have some portable truth. We are going to be a praying people. We are going to be a clean people that abide in his presence. We are not letting this stuff come into our life. We are going to shelter under the shadow. We're going to trust in God. Amen. We will not be put to shame. 
Hallelujah. I will sing to the Lord. I will celebrate his goodness. I will celebrate his promises. I will celebrate his mercy. I will celebrate his faithfulness. He never fails. He will not forsake us. And we could go through all the promises that we could uh, get a hold of in that regard this morning. So there's a journey. There's a course. There's a race that we're called to run. I don't know where you are. I think people like me probably think we're getting closer to the end than we are to the start. <laughs> and, you know, it's sort of, it's, uh, it's, we can sort of get re- re- reasoning, but there's still more fire yet to be brought out. There's more faith to be distributed. There's more of a race that we must run. Paul said in that, in that 12th chapter of, of, of uh, Hebrews, and as I close this morning, it says we're going to lay aside the sin and the weight that so, does so easily beset us. And we're going to run with patience the race that is set before us. Amen. Amen. Going to run with patience or with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. And then it goes on and says how we are to cope with the challenges, lest we become weary and discouraged on the inside. We win from within. We win from within. Let's give attention to our heart, for out of it, the boundaries of our life are set. The destiny of our life is set from within our hearts, not within our circumstance, our education, our opportunities, not even our talents. But it's we win from within. Let's give attention to our heart. Let's finish the race that God has set before us. Let's run with patience. Let's run with endurance. And let's celebrate. In his presence. On that day, we're going to have the real celebration. Amen. Amen. We're going to see him. And we're going to be like him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Pastor.